In the two videos today, we will see how to perform simple linear regression in R and Excel. Note that simple linear regression is the same as the so-called bivariate regression, so regression working with two variables, one dependent variable and one independent variable. Simple re regression is in this way distinguished from so-called multiple or multivariate regression analysis. So simple in this context does not necessarily mean easy or trivial, just in case you were wondering. As always, we will start with R. So let us upload the data. We will work today with two variables only, one capturing population size of member countries of international organizations called Handley population and one capturing countries representation in international organizations staff or secretariat called staff N. Now, if you plot the distribution of these two variables using, for example, histogram, you will see that they both have an extreme positive skew. You may remember that for statistical inference, this is not exactly good and that we want to work with variables that are in their distribution, at least somewhat similar to normal distribution, if possible. Now, sometimes this is not easy to achieve, but this time it is, if we take logarithms of both the variables. That means we will transform them into more symmetrically looking variables. And note that when we take logarithmic transformation, we are not losing any information contained in the data, since this is a one-to-one -one transformation and it is reversible, so all information we have is in fact retained. So we can create these new variables by using this command log and the original variable in brackets. And we can check again with histogram, that the newly created variables are indeed much more normally distributed or much more normally looking. So let us now move towards the regression analysis as such. And we will start with getting a nice scatter plot of the data. For that, we will use the by now already well familiar command called plot. Now, in the brackets of that command, we'll first include the independent variable, so log of population, and then separated by comma, the dependent variable, so log of staff n. The, these are the variables we have just created. We may specify some further plot options if we want, such as axis labels, xlab and ylab, or the main title of the graph using the, com the option main. So here we are with our scatter plot. Now, if we want to make the graph a bit fancier, we can also have it display the country codes or the names. For this, we will use the command text, which is called right after the command plot. So in options, in brackets of this command, we specify again the same independent variable, so log of population, the same dependent variable, log of staff size. And then as the third variable, the variable that contains the names of the countries, or in this case, the codes of the countries, so country code. If we want, we can also specify some further options, such as, um, the one that specifies the size of the text, the position of the text relative to the data point dots, which we have here, all the color of the text. Check this on Google or in our help. There are dozens more, dozens more options. You can spend the whole evening playing with this stuff. So here is our nice scatter plot with descriptions of the data. 
Finally, we will want R to plot through the data, the regression line. To do that, call the command abline or abline. Now, in brackets of this command, we will need to specify the linear model that R should in fact plot through the data. Now we know that it won't, we, need, we want a model that captures these two variables, so we will not be surprised to see that it is the two variables here again. But first we will need to issue a command that actually tells R to create a linear model, which is LM for linear model, and then another set of embedded brackets, one here and one there. And within these embedded brackets we type first the dependent variable, then tilde, the tilde sign, and then the independent variable. Note that we had to switch the order as compared to the previous plot. Now first the dependent variable is specified and then the independent. We can specify the data set either normally using the dollar sign or with a specific option for the command called data, setting data equal to the name of the data set. And again, if you have nothing better to do, you can change the color of the line or whatever you want. So, and here we are. We have a regression line plotted through the data. And we can check that the next command will do exactly the same. So we we plot the data again, and then we use this upline command. So great, we have a nice scatter plot with a regression line plotted through the data and it even didn't hurt that much. So now we can actually perform the regression analysis also numerically, so get the numbers. And in fact we already have most of it ready. As we have just seen in the plot, R calculates the linear regression model if we call the command LM for linear model. Now in brackets, as we have just seen, we have the dependent variable, then the tilde sign, and then the independent variable. So here log stuff and tilde log population. And again, we specify the data set from which to take the variables by setting data equal to the name of the data set. So this command creates a new object, new model, new R object that we will want to call perhaps my beautiful model or whatever you want, it's up to you. And to get the results of the regression analysis, we then tell R to give us the summary of this model we have just created. And for this we use command called, well, summary, which I guess is fair enough. So let's run it, a new object was created and here we want R to summarize it. And here we get the standard output with all the important information. So first, what we have here are the estimates of the intercept, so the A or alpha in the regressions, and of the B slope of the independent variable, so the B or the beta in our equations. So this B coefficient, this is really perhaps the most important number here, captures the effect the independent variable, the log of population size, has on the dependent variable. Now for both these components, so the intercept and the log of population, the independent variable, we also have the calculations of the standard errors and of the t-statistics. Most importantly, we also have the probabilities, the p-values, or the probabilities that either the intercept or the log of population or the independent variable are in fact equal to zero, so that any of these numbers is in fact equal to zero or not sufficiently uh, far away from zero. So we see that these numbers are extremely small here, very close to zero indeed. So if our original hypothesis was that the size of population, our independent variable, has a positive effect on country representation in international organizations, the dependent variable, this linear regression model would tell us that we can quite confidently discard the null hypothesis of no connection between the two. 
So there is only so the probability that there is no relationship is very close to zero, very small indeed. Now what we can also see in the output is that the, the R squared of the model is 0 0.57, which means that our model explains the model of one independent variable explains 57% of variation in the dependent variable. Now, there is much more to regression analysis, but this will be enough for today in terms of the implementation in R.